Hi, and greetings from Norway. I'm Victor, the founder of Fjorden. Should I maybe do one without the flag? You see how that works? Yeah. And our goal is to help you shoot photos like a pro with your iPhone. Let me show you. This is the Fjorden grip. It makes your iPhone feel like a real camera with professional controls. And it makes shooting photos a lot more intuitive and a lot more fun. And we hear from so many people that it inspires them to take more photos and better photos because they feel like they always have a real camera with them in their pocket. In this video, we'll go over all of the features of the Fjorden grip, all of the accessories, the Fjorden camera app, compatibility with Moment Gear and other camera apps, and lots of other tips and tricks. Okay, let's talk about the design and the ergonomics. The main thing that we tried to accomplish when designing it was to keep it really light and thin and pocketable so that you could always have it with you when you're out and about. And it fits in the smallest jeans pocket and together with your iPhone, it's about the same size as an Apple AirPods case. The next thing we tried to do was to keep it modular and upgradable. So let's say next time you upgrade your iPhone, the Fjorden grip is designed to unclip from the case. You buy a new case, you clip the Fjorden grip in again, and then you're ready to shoot. Fjorden runs on a replaceable coin cell battery. So it lasts for about nine to 12 months. You just pull out this little tray here, put in a new coin cell battery. You can find them at any corner store. It's a CR 2032. Pop it in and you're ready to go again. So these are the controls on the Fjorden grip. Here you've got a two-stage shutter button, just like on a real camera. Half press to set and lock the focus and full press to release the shutter. And this is also the on switch. So what I like to do is when I pull it out of the pocket, I already press the on switch and it's Bluetooth, so it takes about a second to connect. And by the time I've got it here, I'm ready to shoot. Then we have the control dial, which you can use to select different camera parameters. It's clickable and you can cycle through all the different camera parameters and change them. And we have a customizable function button. And lastly, we have a zoom lever for switching lenses and zooming in and out. So we'll go into all of these in more detail when I show you the Fjorden camera app. And because it's Norway, it also works with gloves. It's cold here and we wear gloves for about half of the year. All of these controls can easily be operated even while you're wearing gloves. Okay, so how to hold it? There's two different schools of thought on this one. Me personally, I like to rest my fingers on this surface and press it into my palm and my thumb rests on top. And then I can reach all of the controls easily with my index finger and I like to operate the zoom with my middle finger. But there's a different school of thought, which is our designers, they like to hold it with their pinky underneath here. So then you have these fingers almost free, your thumb is resting on top and you can move them around. You can just try which one you find more comfortable. And because Fjorden lives on your iPhone, we wanted to make it useful even when you're not taking photos. And that's why we've built in a kickstand with a friction hinge. So the kickstand, you can fold it out like so, and then you can have it on your desk for reading or for FaceTime calls. And you can also rotate it by 90 degrees and then have it like so for watching videos. Was found found this found found there. Oh, we sorry. Said there. Another thing that the friction hinge is great for is you can pretty much use it like a pop socket. You just fold it out slide your fingers around the hinge like so, and then you can comfortably hold your phone while you're scrolling, reading, whatever. And then you can also turn the hinge 90 degrees this way and use it to shoot photos in portrait mode. When you get the Fjorden, this is the box that it comes in. You slide it open. There's actually a photo taken by uh, Fjorden users. And in there you'll find the Fjorden grip and the adhesive plate. The adhesive plate fits on even the smallest iPhones, the iPhone SE and the iPhone 12 mini and 13 mini. It's meant for usually older iPhones for which we don't make cases. 
while I was waiting for our own iPhone 14 Pro cases to arrive, I just had one of these, the adhesive plates, on just a cheap third-party case. On the back, it has 3M adhesive. You just pull off this protective cover and you stick it onto the case. The Fjorden grip is designed to clip either into the adhesive plate or into our MagSafe cases. So our MagSafe iPhone cases come with interchangeable loop straps. The one that's in here is a double loop. The one that I'm using is a single loop. And these are meant for clipping in a wrist strap or a camera strap. You can also just take them out if you feel that you don't want or need them. Then we have the wrist straps, and these come in two different colors, in black and in green. And this is how you clip them in to the case. There you go. So if you want to carry Fjorden like a real camera, that's what the dual loop strap is for. We have these great leather camera straps from Moment that we also sell in our store. You can pop them through the two loops here and then just carry it like a real camera. Next, we have the Fjorden clamshell case. And this one is designed to protect your Fjorden grip when you've taken it off your iPhone. In here, you'll find a little pouch for your Fjorden grip and another one for spare batteries, credit cards, or other little small things you want to protect. And if you want to use Fjorden with your existing MagSafe case from another manufacturer, like a Peak Design case or a Moment case or your Apple case, that's what the new MagSafe adapter is meant for. You just pop it onto the back of your MagSafe case and then clip in the Fjorden grip. And there you go. The MagSafe adapter comes with some extra features. You've got a thumb rest here, which is height adjustable with a little screw, so you can adjust it to your liking. And for the different sizes of iPhone, it gives you a great grip here. On this side, we have a tripod mount screw. So you can also screw it onto your tripod and then use it to attach your phone for shoots either this way or that way. And of course, it also works great as a stand on your desk. The MagSafe adapter also comes with an optional cold shoe that you can slide in here, clicks into place, and then you can use it to mount microphones, LED lights, whatever you want to use a cold shoe for. And then remove it again if you don't need it. So with the MagSafe adapter, it also still fits into the pocket and you can mount it in portrait mode or landscape mode. The Fjorden MagSafe cases are also compatible with Moment Gear. So for example, if you're used to putting a UV filter onto your camera lens, there is one from Moment that does that for your iPhone. This is called the Moment CineClear and it snaps onto our cases like so. And you put it on If you want to use Moment lenses, this is how you do it. So first, remove your iPhone from the case, and then you pop out this little lens ring here, and you put in this Moment lens mount. It takes a little bit of force to click in, so you can press quite hard from the inside. You just have to align the two little lines on the inside, and then press. Put the iPhone back in. And then you can mount your moment lenses. So let's look at the Fjorden camera app. What I like to do is to just press the shutter button once I pull the Fjorden out of my pocket, and then it connects. You can launch the Fjorden app either by tapping the lock screen widgets that we have for auto, manual mode and portrait mode. Or, and this is a pro tip, 
You can also set up back tap. You just have to tap twice and it'll launch the Fjorden camera app. When the grip is connected, you'll see a little yellow dial appear on the screen. The Fjorden camera app has three different shooting modes. There is auto mode, manual mode and portrait mode. Auto mode is pretty much like the stock iPhone camera app with some extras thrown in. In manual mode, you get full creative control. And portrait mode, you can select uh, the aperture and simulate the depth of field. And you can cycle through the modes by tapping on the screen and choosing auto, manual, or portrait. Or you can also press and hold FN, the function button, and that will cycle through the modes as well. So in auto mode, you can half press the shutter, full press to release. You can tap on the screen to set different exposure and focus. So for example, if we want to have the focus on Alex, our cameraman, get the exposure on the darker part and you see the image gets brighter. You can also use the dial to set the exposure compensation. If I want to get the image darker, just turn the dial. Or if I want to get a bit brighter, turn it the other way and press and hold the dial and it will reset to automatic exposure. Then there's the zoom lever. You can use that to quickly switch lenses by just flicking and it'll go from 3x, 2x, 1x ultra wide. Or if I just hold it, it'll gradually zoom. Auto mode has some limitations. It won't let you change the shutter speed, the ISO and the white balance. And also sometimes the iPhone will select the lens that it thinks will take the best picture. So if it's dark, for example, it might, instead of using the telelens that you've chosen, it might digitally zoom into the wider lens because that has less uh, image shake. Next, there's manual mode. And that's where you really get the full creative control. If you want to make sure that it uses the lens that you want, you can go to manual mode or you can press and hold the function button. Now I'm in manual mode and now it'll always use the lens that you've chosen. Here in manual mode you have access to shutter speed, ISO, white balance and I can click the dial to cycle through these different parameters. And now I'm back at the top and I can use that to change the shutter speed and also the ISO or press and hold to reset. And if I want to change the white balance to make the image warmer or colder, I can either use these presets or on the Kelvin scale, slide up and down, or I can use the dial to change the settings and press and hold to reset to auto. And here is the focus, which is also currently set to autofocus. Now, if I want to set the focus manually, I can use the dial and now I'm in manual focus. And I can turn on focus peaking to really show what element of the image is in focus. Say you want to take a macro photo with the moment lens and you really want to be precise about where you're setting the focus. I can now turn on the focus peaking and use the dial to very precisely change the focus. You can also choose between spot focus and face tracking and I've assigned that to this function button here. So by default I would have spot focus. I can use that to set a focus and then reframe, but you can also just tap this button and then it'll identify the face and follow it. And that's where it'll set the exposure and the focus. You can also choose different grids. Like by default, I like to just have the rule of thirds, but you also have dynamic symmetry, square, if you're mostly photographing for Instagram, and 16 by nine. Or of course you can turn it off as well. 
above that, we have the format. You can choose Pro-RAW or just straight RAW, JPEG, or JPEG and Pro both together. Here at the top, I have my flash, and I can turn the flash on or off, or set it to auto. And then up here is our histogram feature. You can have a luminance histogram or an RGB histogram. You can also customize this toolbar in the app just by going to Settings, Customize Tools, and here you can choose what you want to have in the toolbar. If you want to simplify it or move things around, and you can reorder them however you want. And the next mode is portrait mode. Again, you can just cycle through by pressing and holding the function button. And then here's Alex. I can turn the dial to change how much I want to set the aperture, blur the background more or less. And there we go. Here in the gallery, you can obviously see all of the details for the image that you've taken. You can use the grip as well to quickly cycle through the different photos just by turning the dial. And if you press the shutter button, it'll go straight back to shooting mode. The Fjorden grip is also compatible with the iOS stock camera app. You can use the shutter to take photos, or if I press and hold, it'll start recording video. Or you can use it with any of the other shooting modes, like cinematic, slow-mo, and the shutter button will start and stop video recording. We also have an API for the Fjorden Grip, which means that other camera app developers can integrate their apps with the hardware. And that's why the Fjorden Grip also works with some other great camera apps like Pro Camera and Obscura. That's what I wanted to show you. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you found it useful. Bye.